You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping SmackDown Live from September 19th. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. This was a decent show. It was all right. It was watchable. Um, I had mentioned this earlier. <laughs> I think uh, I think I've developed a uh, a bias against SmackDown because it just it it just I go into the the show thinking it's gonna not be good. Yeah. So I just immediately assume everything's gonna suck, and then <clears throat> I start thinking about it. I'm like, oh, maybe it's not that bad. I mean, I understand that. I, I feel like sometimes I have i guess certain thoughts right after the show that the show is bad and then we kind of review it i'm like oh, i guess it wasn't that bad mm-hmm. i know you but, do that with raw quite yeah. a bit well it's just the three hours it's long it's true yeah um all right so uh smackdown opened up with uh i guess a recap of what had had happened the last or the last two weeks between yeah shane attacking owens and then owens attacking vince mm-hmm. um so I guess to ca- get people caught up to what's yeah. going on, which, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you were watching, or if you were watching last night, you would be watching the last two weeks. You would think so. Yeah, yeah. not not very often that people no I who know what's going on if, aren't watching every week. If the casual fan catches anything, it's raw probably, not SmackDown. I, I would imagine so. Yeah, but uh, so we actually opened the show with uh, Shane McMahon coming out. Yeah, the money came out. Mm-hmm. And he talks about all the events that transpired, well, actually, last week. Um, and then, you know, he was going on to say that his, his kids witnessed their grandfather get their, get his ass kicked. It's true. Yeah. And uh, he basically called Kevin Owens a coward and that the McMahons will get massive vengeance, which I don't How know. How do you get big vengeance? I don't know. That's what he said. It's weird. Yeah. And that he condemned Kevin Owens and then he condemned him to a whole bunch of things i guess and then he condemned him to hell in a cell yeah so <laughs> did he did he say hell in the cell at one point I, was this when he did it might have i, I could have I swore that he said it like that i'm like that's not right <clears throat> yeah um well we we were told about this match last week, but yeah, we, we learned already... about it last week, and I guess we assumed it was going to be at the yeah. Pay-per-view. It there there was no reason for them not to have this match be Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. It's true. So how long is this man going to keep going, Shane? Yeah. Um. Well, Undertaker's fifty two, so Shane's got to go at least until he's sixty two. You think? Or, <laughs> or what he's doing <clears throat> is that he took how old Vince was in his last match. Yeah. And he's going to go one day later. I guess, I guess that's possible. So that means that the WWE is not going to be a thing anymore when he has his last match. Well, what was Vince's last match? Ha- was that with 2008? Shawn Michaels? Yeah. Him and, him and Shane against Shawn Michaels and God. <clears throat> I think it was 2007. Remember that time we were talking about that we weren't watching wrestling? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a reason for it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, absolutely. It certainly wasn't unjustified. No. So... So, yeah. I, I don't think Shane's going to stop doing one-offs. All right. So, Hell in a Cell is what? Probably three weeks away? I want to say it's Two. October... F- it's probably October 15th. So, you figure three... It's almost a month away. Yeah. Imagine. Or it's either the 15th or the 8th. It might be the 8th. How much do they... How much more do they do to build this up? Um. Nothing. That's the thing. There's yeah, really not a whole not lot much they, can, they do. can do. So there's going to be the same thing as Raw did last week. Yeah. Or this week, where they got to the right before the pay per view, and they're like, "Oh, we we we're out of ideas." <laughs> so, <clears throat> but yeah, who knows? Yep. It's it's tough when you have that weird gap. Yeah, there's a chance that they might just forget about the story for a couple of weeks. I don't know. Well, it's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just don't have October 8th. Okay, so, All right, so it's eighth. closer. So we got two more weeks, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. I think that's right. what they've been doing pretty consistently. That's not that bad then. But um, it's at the Little Caesars Arena. 
Well, you got to remember, there's a lot of corporate sponsors that bought up um, arenas around the country. Yeah. So there's some ridiculously named stadiums now. It's mm-hmm. really funny. I believe it. Um, so yeah, then we get the first match of the night between Aiden English and Randy Orton. Yeah. This is what, a rematch from... It happened probably ago. about a month or two yeah, ago. I guess it's really not a rematch. No. Um, yeah, well, yeah, if it was like a week ago, yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. Um, surprisingly, I don't know. They've been giving Aiden English a lot of uh, TV time. Yeah, it's weird because he's not doing anything. He's just around. No, because what did they announce him as when uh, he, they had a special name for him? Yeah, it was... I don't remember. It was like a fancy... Yeah, bushy word mm-hmm. for like uh, being a singer. Yeah, and then uh, the beginning of the match, they actually spilled to the outside, and uh, Aiden English actually dropped Randy Orton on top of the announce table. Yeah, um, he uh, he had because they did the that the was commercial the, thing. Yeah, the picture in picture. He 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 had um, control of the match for the majority of it, and uh, the only reason why Randy won was because he hit a RKO when Aiden English was jumping off the top. Yeah, I don't know what he was planning on doing. Because Randy was standing there, and he kind of, like, jumped toward him like he was going to do a splash on him, as if he was laying on the ground. Um, but it was just obviously meant to set up the RKO. Yeah. So. I was going to say, there's never a point in time where it makes sense for people to do stuff like that. Oh, I know. Because, like, if they go to do, like, an elbow drop and they get caught, mm. like, obviously that wasn't going to work. Yeah. The best... The best um, example of that i've ever seen was i think it was a match between the new day and the usos like r- right when they first started feuding mm-hmm. xavier woods did like a drop kick as um jimmy was like jumping across yeah i so he did a he did a i think a like a drop kick off the top rope mm-hmm. and jimmy happened to be running across oh and, with the super was that the super kick yeah or, yeah that okay. was like the best right yes best example yeah. of something that made sense of why you were doing it right no no no. yeah that, that was a very good spot <laughs> but beyond that it's more of like okay i need to be in a position i know it's gonna look awkward but right. i gotta i gotta set it up somehow yeah i gotta sell the rko yep pretty much um, although it did look good yeah oh yeah absolutely so no it was very fluid so yeah. uh so after after the match ended rusev comes out and i think he had a microphone with him he did and uh he basically talks about being a they all his embarrassing loss he suffered to uh, Randy Orton at SummerSlam in ten seconds. Yep, and that he was going to take the fangs out of the Viper tonight. Yes, which, yeah. I guess he means he's gonna make him not venomous anymore. I guess. Well, he said he was gonna attack a legend, right? Last week he did. So I don't, I don't know if you can really consider Randy Orton a legend. No, not really. So, unless his plan is to beat Orton, take his fangs, and then finally finish off Ric Flair or something. Wow. I know. That's a little Oof. a little much. <laughs> Jeez. So, um, Might as well set you up in a segment with Jinder Mahal. Wow. Well, I'm not that bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so apparently we've got an impromptu match between Rusev and Randy Orton. Yeah, basically, or uh, Rusev comes into the ring. The ref goes, "Do you want to fight him to Orton?" And then <laughs> of course he's like, I do. "Yeah." And then he rings the bell. Mm-hmm. Um, Orton goes, I guess, to get momentum off the ropes. Yeah, he bumps. Well, he in- first goes for an RKO, and then Rusev pushes him. Oh, okay. Uh, Orton hits the ropes as. Um, Aiden English is getting onto the apron. I guess. Right? And then he, they kind of bump into each other, and then Orton comes back, and Rusev hits him with a super kick, and that was it. And then he gets pinned. Yeah. That was weird. Right? A little bit. Um, that, that was it. Yeah. Because, like, there's really... <clears throat> I guess they each have their own embarrassing loss now. I was going to say, this, this wasn't really an embarrassing loss. This doesn't prove anything, because Orton didn't really lose fairly. Because he just wrestled a match, and um, he, you know, kind of got interfered with. So, it's it's hard to say. Yeah. <clears throat> but, so we go backstage, and uh, what does Renee run up to uh, Rusev? And she goes, why do you look so elated, right? I think that's what she said. Uh, it sounds right. And she was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and he's like, well, why do you look so excited? And he's like... I'm going. I'm going back to uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria, yeah, as a hero. 
Yeah. It was funny. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. It's, oh, it's a little weird. <clears throat> it, it's not very often that people like take small victories like that, and it's a big deal. Usually championships would be more mm-hmm. exciting, but I guess Rusev's got to take what he can get nowadays. Yeah. It's lucky he's on TV. It's true. Oh, we get up next. We get your favorite moment of the night. It is another odd segment. Yeah. Um. So Jinder Mahal comes out with the Bollywood Boys, um, and basically, it's the same thing as last week. Them making fun of the pictures, but with like racial tones to pretty much everything he said. And they weren't even undertones. They were. Uh, they were out there. Yeah, like very obvious. Um, I guess stereotypes for japanese people or people of asian descent in general yes um so like he said a lot of a lot of strain or he said words strangely to imitate an asian person and then he just said some like flat out this is not a good look for your wwe champion yeah so and like (laughs) we were kind of at least i was starting to get a little on board with the whole jinder's run like there there was potential to do something here yeah but well, um, unfortunately, it's just I don't know. I, I don't think there's a way to revive this. I I think this was meant to be a little more, um, joking. Yeah. And like, okay, you make fun of me for how I am, so I'm gonna do it to him. Right. So, like, <clears throat> obviously their i their plan wasn't to be very offensive, but so they, it it just wasn't perceived well yeah well i know Obviously. we didn't yeah so and you, i think you said that the the fans were chanting that's too far yeah, i think it was something like that's something to that uh yeah so respect but yeah i i don't know well i, I think this is they don't know how to extend this feud. Uh-huh. So they're just coming they're up just with coming stuff. Up crap. Yeah. Because <clears throat> obviously this is no fault of genders because... No, this is all written for them. But I guarantee if Vince was there, he was laughing his ass off. It's true. Because I'm sure he thought it was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> so I love how it came out, uh, articles that Vince had been suffering from memory loss and then he gets headbutted in the head. Well, you know, that's, that's how you that's get good. the memory loss. <laughs> No, it was before that. No, I mean, yeah. that's why. I mean. Oh, okay, that's why he has. He's trying memory. to encourage. Ah, yes, 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 he doesn't yes. want to run. Yeah. So, uh, mm. all right. So uh, after that debacle, uh, Renee Young in- <clears throat> interviews Shinsuke. Um, and, and yeah, Shinsuke just basically says that he's not going to be laughing after I defeat him at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. So what they could be doing is more of like the story of the champion not taking the challenger seriously, right? And then. Well, He's, I beat him once, I can beat him again, you know? Yeah, so... Now, this, there's no plan for this to be a Hell in a Cell match, right? Uh, not yet. You think they're there's, gonna? Um, well, we're, we're probably gonna get two, at least. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking Uso's New Day. That would make sense. And Shane and... Owens. Sh- yeah, those are most likely. Well, obviously, yeah, well, Shane and Shane Owens, Owens is yeah. already confirmed. But they've never done a tag team one, right? I think we've talked about this. You said that you thought they did, but I think we looked it up and they did not um i'm not sure i could have swore they have but <clears throat> we could do that again let's uh i'll look it up you okay so uh, up next we had i don't know this was this was a bit of a weird segment mm-hmm. just that uh aj came out with the microphone and he was kind of talking about what transpired with kevin owens and vince last week and how you know everything he's there the the past he's had with shane mcmahon and their battles and he was basically hyping the match up, and then uh, then he turned it over to talking about Baron Corbin and his failures, you know, to cash in the money in the bank and yeah, what to to I guess make it to the uh, open challenge a couple weeks ago and things like that. It was, you know, it was just like they needed to fill that time because this match was going to get interrupted. Like mm-hmm. that's just what it felt like. Yeah, well, it's not very often <laughs> that they have wrestlers come out and talk about other, other people's things food. right before the match. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, did this match actually start, or did it not? No, no, the it bell didn't. never. The rang. bell never. I thought it did ring, mm. and then. So anyway, before the bell even rang, yeah, uh, Ty Dillinger came out and kind of like chop blocked Baron Corbin in the back of the knee, right? I think. Uh, I guess I know that um, eventually he ended it, up having an ankle. Well, they. I think him and uh, Ty had 
clotheslined him over the top rope to the outside, and that's the way he landed. Okay. Where he was selling the ankle or calf or whatever. Yeah, I think it was the ankle. Yeah, and then so I guess a bunch of referees came out and pulled Ty off him and because he's not supposed to, to be in the match that technically never started. Right, and then I guess I guess the referee was going to restart the match, but Corbin wasn't able to stand up. So he was kind of limping around, and then yeah. AJ took advantage of him and put him in the calf crusher. Well, I think first he hit him with a clothesline, knocked him over, oh, and he? then he hit him with the uh, put him in the calf crusher. That makes sense. And at that point, when he finally let go, Baron Corbin rolls out of the ring and then runs up the runs yeah. up the ramp. Yeah. <clears throat> and then backstage, uh, Corbin was limping around. He apparently had sprained his ankle, is what he said. Yeah. And he was just pissed about. Not, uh, being attacked by Ty Dillinger and uh, not, not getting a shot at the title, the yeah. U.S. title. Um, so, I, yeah, it's hard to tell where they're actually going with this story because, again, this is it's just that long time period. And yeah, most of AJ's feuds really weren't built like like him and Owens. They it was just wrestling. Mm -hmm. you know? There was not a whole lot of other things going on. No um because like they paused it and then they did the money in the bank and then went back to it yeah so at at, at first it seemed pretty clear that it was just going to be um aj and corbin mm -hmm. with the one-off with dillinger being involved but mm -hmm. now it seems like he's firmly <clears throat> involved in the storyline so it, it is possible yeah. that they could have a multi-man match in yeah. lnsl for or between the three of them but right. it just doesn't feel right no well, it's because, I don't know, Ty was just kind of stuck there. But yeah. it makes it makes sense the yeah, way it does. they did it. Because it, it was um, Ty getting a chance at the title, and it yeah. got stolen by Corbin. It's just, so. I don't know, just ever since Corbin failed cashing that money in the bank, and it's just kind of been lackluster for him. I guess so. But whatever. And everything yeah it's just we'll, we'll figure out what uh, they're probably next week we'll like you said ever idea. since they ruined his theme music that is true yeah he had he went from having the best theme or one well, the of entrance. the best one of the best entrances yeah. the theme wasn't bad well yeah but it just worked with uh mm -hmm. with everything yeah and now his entrance music is terrible yeah so. not really coming around to it so whatever yeah. all right so uh up next uh they announced that charlotte was gonna come uh I guess come back to TV after being gone for a while yeah. to take care of Rick, um, and then uh, <clears throat> she comes out. She starts talking about how this experience has led her to feel that she needs to take every opportunity mm -hmm. and make everything, or take Count, every opportunity yeah. and yeah, and what have don't you. take anything for granted yeah. and things like that. It mm -hmm. was it was really a heartfelt promo. Yeah. She was starting to tear up. I think right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. Uh, <laughs> natalia comes out and natalia isn't the best uh actress so she was like crying at this point um yeah she it definitely looked that way. Yeah, yeah and she said that you know she's glad that rick is all right but mm -hmm. this is going to be a celebration about of women yes <laughs> and then uh she kind of talks about all the things uh, that women have done and then talks about the may young classic and everything yeah the and may young classic they talked about what did she say? This is the thing that, uh, uh, what the hell was her name? It had nothing to do with wrestling. Oh, you're talking about, uh, um, Amelia Earhart. Yeah. yeah. What, she did stuff, something that she couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do, do or whatever. <laughs> that, that was weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then she basically shifted the focus all onto her. Yeah. And then she had a picture in the ring. Like there was a couple guys that walked out with her carrying a, a canvas. A canvas. Yeah. And then they, it was covered with, and uh, they removed the covering, and it was a picture of Natalia holding the title. Yeah, I so. guess it, that was taken right after she won it. Yeah, I would right, assume. All right, yeah, I would think so. Um, so, but yeah, it ended up being uh, Natalia wanted a, a moment of spotlight, apparently. Mm -hmm. And then Charlotte said that she's back to challenge Natty for the title. Yeah, and then Becky comes out. And then Naomi comes out, well, and they want title matches. When Becky came out, it's pretty funny because she did the, the Bret Hart thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, the, uh, yeah the worst, in, right? No, the craziest. Oh, the craziest, right. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. It yeah, was, that uh, was funny. You're the craziest there ever, the, was. the craziest there is, the craziest there ever was, and probably the craziest, craziest there ever will be. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. 
Uh, good stuff. Um, after Becky and Charlotte uh, talk a little more with Natty, and then mm. Naomi comes out. Right. And she does a a long, drawn out entrance yep. for a talking segment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she says, "Well, while you guys are asking for title shots, I want one too." Right. And then Tamina and Lana comes out, mm-hmm. and Lana is like, "All oh, you guys have already had your title shots. Now it's Tamina's time." Mm-hmm. And then uh, after that, Daniel Bryan comes out and makes a fatal four-way for the number one contendership, right at Hell in a Cell, I believe that's what they said. That's when the title match will yeah, be. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So the number one contendership match was taking place in the main event. Yes. Later on. Um, it's kind of funny. I like. It stood out to me that Charlotte was wearing street clothes oh, when yeah, she yeah. came out, and so mm-hmm. was Natalia, and so was Becky, yeah. and so was Naomi. Mm. And I'm like, that's weird that they have them wear street clothes to come out. Yeah, well, I had seen earlier on that it was announced that there was going to be a triple threat between Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky oh. for to become the number one contender. Huh. But I don't know about that part. Then they added Tamina in at the last second, I yeah. guess. I don't know. It's just, it's so weird because usually they'll have them wear the ring gear throughout the whole show. Um, and it's super uncommon for them to wear street clothes and then wrestle Everybody. Yeah, yeah. shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was strange. I'm like, a little bit, eh. but every, the little things. Yeah. All right. So, uh, up next we have the second official match. Mm-hmm. Um, the New Day versus the Hype Bros. So, why did the Hype Bros look better against the Tag Team Champions than they did against uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable? Because Shelton Benjamin and Chad <laughs> Gable are probably the two best wrestlers on the... Or certainly the best tag team right yeah, now. Yeah, but... In terms of actual wrestling. Yeah, but they are not the Tag Team Champions. It's true, but and they probably won't be for a while, but... No, nah, not for a little while at least. So, but, you know, they are great. Yeah, but yeah, this was a decent match back and forth. Also, uh, I loved uh, Mojo. I think he was slapping Big E in the uh, oh, yeah. the the New Day Rocks chant, saying mm. uh, "He ain't hype. He ain't hype." Yeah, and uh, I think the, the Usos were on commentary for this match as well. Yes, and they so. didn't add a whole lot. I don't think. No, not really. But yeah. it's just furthering their storyline. Well, too. yeah. Well, that's pretty much that's pretty much what the WWE does now. If there's a match that well, happens... Well, we've seen enough matches between oh, the two yeah. teams. Not that I'm complaining because they've all been good quality matches, but yeah. there's only so much you can do. But yeah, basically it's you have a feud, and then if someone in the feud has a match with someone else, the other one has to be on commentary. They do that a lot oh, with yeah. the women. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Especially teams. on Raw. But on both Actually, of them, yeah, that's too. right, yeah, because we had Naomi on commentary. Yeah, the women in the tag thing. teams, it happens the most. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, the the new day end up going over after a midnight hour on uh, I think it was Zack Ryder, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, the hype bros were not very hype after this match. No, not at all. So it's gonna happen. You're probably right. I know. <laughs> uh, he's obviously referring to a a potential uh, Zack Ryder heel turn. Just yeah, a split of the hype bros. Yeah, which. I don't know what they're going to do after that since they barely get TV time as it is. I was going to say, it's counterintuitive what we're talking about <laughs> on the Raw review, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, up next, we had, uh, where they had spoken earlier on that we were going to get Kevin Owens via satellite. Yes, by via satellite, they mean sitting in, in a room backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, Owens was apologizing and he said he couldn't believe what, had, what he had done. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, he apologized to everyone. Well,. He apologized to the WWE Universe, the McMahon family, and probably someone else, I yeah. think. Everyone's well, yeah. that. But he said that Shane had it coming. Right. That he deserved mm-hmm. it. Yes, he placed the blame solely on Shane. Mm-hmm. And he needs to be held responsible mm-hmm. for his actions. Yes, because he was the reason he beat him up was because of the disrespect he received mm-hmm. from Shane McMahon in the previous week. Yes. And then... He said that every time he looked at Vince, he saw Shane, so that's why he had to beat him up. Makes sense. Yep. See, I mean, like, yeah. I guess this is what they're just going to do for the next couple weeks, things like this. Yeah, like little things, nothing major. No. So. Well, yeah, they're definitely not going to get in the ring together. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um. All right, so uh, up next we have the Hype Bros backstage talking about how the state of the Hype Bros. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's that's a good way to put it. Yeah, Mojo says that he's tired of losing all the time and mm-hmm. something's got to give. Yep. And then he's like, he goes to Zach. He's like, what do you think? He's like, you might be right. And yep. then that was it. Yeah, he basically said that they're going to have to make a drastic change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did you watch 205 last night? Yes. Yes. Uh, Fashion Police? No. Nope. No? Nothing? Nope. Wow. Okay. So, uh, I guess that was, you were just wondering if they... Yeah, I was just curious, because they weren't on the show. Yeah, no. And we could have easily replaced Dolph Ziggler with the Fashion Files. I don't know. I liked this one. Yeah. This one was good. Mm. Last week's wasn't. This yeah. one was. Man, those fans really want him to come oh, out of CM Punk, though. That's not what they wanted. They were doing the CM Punk, we don't like what you're uh, giving us okay. punk chance. Because that's what a lot of people online were saying they wanted to see, so... I don't know. I, that, I got the vibe of, we don't want... Because what's, what's he going to do? Come out with a sweatshirt on? It's a yeah. cult of personality. Yeah, I mean, if that music played, I the audience would go crazy. Yeah, but imagine if that's what this was leading to. Because <laughs> this, this would actually be the best way to do it to, for it's anybody. True. For anybody, though. Yeah. Any kind of debut. Well, like uh, Vince had made reference to Punk last week when he said that Kevin Owens would go bankrupt trying to sue the WWE or fighting the WWE. I believe that was in reference to Punk trying to... Didn't he try to sue them? He is suing them. No, he, yeah, he is certainly suing, not going yeah. broke. No, but I think that's what he's... Maybe. He's going to keep trying and trying and trying, yeah. I, I, I'm almost positive he has a good case, though. So, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Not, not important. Um, so, but yeah, Dolph comes out and he does his uh, thing with uh, entrances. The first one he does is Triple H, mm-hmm. which was fantastic. Because anybody when he came can out, spit water. <laughs> can I can I run NXT now? <laughs> yeah. That's that great. Was um, and then he came back as uh, HBK, and he was like, "Yeah, oh, this doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm losing my smile or something like that." He said, "Yeah." And then, and then uh, what did he do? Billy Gunn, right? No, he just he, he was just DX. Yeah, but, he just okay. did DX. Because I could have sworn he said on Twitter that it was supposed to be Billy Gunn. But what is he gonna do, Ass Man? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it was. It was better than his the last one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he just he was going on about how he's the best wrestler and everyone else is just an entrance mm-hmm. and no one appreciates him and and then he leaves after saying that if you guys don't care, neither do I. Right. That's it. Yeah, it was basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. So this has to be le- well, supposedly it's leading to him against Bobby Roode. I would assume. Um, but and then there was talk about Kevin Owens and Bobby Roode after Hell in a Cell. That would, work. that would be a very I, good. I would imagine that anything Dolph does is on a short-term basis anyway. Yeah. So. That's probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. 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 So that brought us up to our main event. Yes. The, the Fatal, Fatal Four Way. Way. Yeah. Naomi versus Charlotte versus Becky versus Tamina. The yes. winner faces Natalia at Hell in a Cell for the Women's Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this was very similar to the... Uh, Six pack challenge kind of on Raw, where there's a lot of, you know, close calls and oh, yeah. breakups of pins. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a typical multi person match. Um, at one point, I don't remember how it went. I think, oh, yeah, Tamina and Naomi were down. Mm. And oh, Charlotte, the, Charlotte hit, hit the, the moonsault. Moon yeah. I think that's the first time she's hit a moonsault on a opponent on the ground. Really? I think they always, they're always standing when she does it. But she hit it on the two of them. No, she had to have hit it inside I, the ring. I don't remember ever seeing yeah, her do fair that. Fair enough. Um, well, the, the ones go to the outside always overshadow the other I ones. I guess so. so. Um, but yeah, she goes to pin both of them yeah. at Which the same time. Which is funny time. because Naomi was the only one to kick out, and Tamina just laid there. I thought they both kicked out. I, I could have sworn Naomi was the only one to kick yeah. out. But but they, I, there was a kick out, yeah. I guess, because Charlotte didn't win. Mm. Um, and then she went to uh, pin Tamina. Mm-hmm. And I think it, that's no, 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 no. That was a little later on. But I think I guess I guess Becky breaks out the pin. Yeah, I think that. Was um, it. a little later on, uh, Charlotte has Naomi in the figure eight, mm. and then Becky goes to the top rope, hits a leg drop on her, and then she goes to pin Charlotte, but, but um, Naomi's still locked in to Charlotte, so <laughs> she goes to lift her leg, and Naomi goes with her a little oh, bit. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's right. when Tamina broke up the pin mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of good spots. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, Tamina was actually booked kind of like a monster, like she's been. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of the match, that's how they kind of really yeah. focused on her. 
this, while it seems to be not bad, what her and uh, Lana are doing, mm. it makes me feel like they really don't know how to book, book her? people. Because people they're, in general, or just her? people in general? Because yeah. this is this is the same thing they're doing with Nia Jax, right? So, it, it, well, you don't want to beat put them in a spot where they're unbeatable, you know? Yeah, but my my point is, it just it feels lazy. But is that what we complain about all the time? I know. I don't, I'm just <laughs> just re, restating the we, obvious. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta keep up because. There was points in time where it obviously wasn't likely, but it kind of felt like there's a chance that Tamina would win. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because at least that's there, but... It, yeah, I mean, you didn't, I didn't see Tamina versus... Natalia? Natalia, no, no. no. Granted, I didn't see Natalia versus Naomi at SummerSlam either. It's true, but I don't think anyone saw Natalia versus anybody for the No, that's title, true. So. But I, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, well, if um, Tamina wins... There's no way that Nia is going to win the women's title on Raw. You think? You're putting a lot of faith into them. No, I'm, I'm just saying that I don't think they would go with two, the the Dominant. same character in the title picture, even if it's different roles. Yeah, yeah I guess so. So, but um, eventually Charlotte ends up winning. Um, strangely enough, she wins with the boot. Yeah, so Tamina ended up hitting a splash from the top rope onto Becky. Yes. And Naomi ended up breaking up the pin. So after Naomi breaks it up, Lana grabs her leg and pulls her out of the ring. Mm. And then I guess as Tamina was getting up, she turns around and Charlotte hits a boot for the win. Yeah. It was an ugly boot, but yeah, she... they were close. They were too close almost, it looked like. Yeah. Um, It's not the first time she's won with the boot either. That's weird. No. So, but whatever. But I mean, it is like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It's weird the way they book things. Yeah. Plain and simple. But the, the match wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, not much wrestling on SmackDown. No. Because they, it's like, it's almost as if they need the same, like, ratio from, like, non-wrestling segments to yeah. wrestling segments. But it feels like it's, like, more balanced on Raw for mm -hmm. whatever reason. But. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so. it's that long time between pay-per-views. Uh, yeah, that certainly doesn't help. Yeah. So, and yeah. I guess two weeks away, so hopefully the next two weeks are decent. We'll see. We'll probably get a Because it looks like home. there sure. has been four confirmed matches. Yeah. Well, yeah. we knew about all those. Yeah, right? no, I know, but I'm just trying to figure out what else they're going to build up. I'm guessing we're going to get Rusev and Randy Orton again. There's also no U.S. title match there. There is not because they have not announced one yet. I'm I'm saying that that's oh, okay, going yeah. to going to be something yeah. that happens. But like we, well, I guess we just thought that it wasn't necessarily true, right? That SmackDown has usually more matches but shorter. Yeah, I, I thought so, yeah. but I could be wrong. No, I it like sounds right. right. Yeah, whatever. Because I don't see Jinder versus Shinsuke being very long. No, no. I no. think Owens and Machine will be a decent length match. Just because it's hell in a cell. Yeah. So. But, so but yeah. Yep, that was our SmackDown review. Yes, if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.